Our second speaker is Parviz Hemati. Parvin Hemati, I'm sorry. She represents Fadayan Khal Iran organization. Made the majority. She will speak about the executions of 1988. Can you hear me now? I want to first take this opportunity to ask Sudvind and its comrades for the hard work that they do and for the opportunity they gave me. Ladies and gentlemen, 27 years ago, in such days, the, supreme, the then Supreme Leader, Ruhollah Khomeini, ordered execution of thousands of political prisoners. Before this, on this place, we have spoken many times about the murders of 1988 that we call, Iranians call it the national catastrophe. Many survivors and many human rights activists call it that. Today, I want to speak on behalf of a political organization, i.e. organization of people for Dayan majority, who, which lost hundreds of its members in, its, in this massacre. Our organization, after 1979, turned into peaceful struggle and tried to be a critical political organization and act legally in such a fashion. But the new government continued these pressures on our organization almost immediately after the victory of the revolution. And it continued, it intensified. It was in the very early days of the 1980s that many supporters and members of the organization would have been arrested, tortured, and sometimes summarily executed without any legal procedures. It was finally in 1986 where the Iranian government in an organized fashion attacked our organization all over the country and hundreds of our members and followers were dis arrested. Most of those who were arrested after months of torture in courts that were only a few minutes without legal representation, they were condemned to short, medium term or long term prison sentences. Some died on the torture, some didn't even go to the torture, or some didn't even go to the court, or when they did, they didn't actually get a verdict. Almost all those arrested in summer 1988 were there in prison when the catastrophe happened. In summer 1988, as the eight-year war with Iraq had finished and our people were hoping for better days to come, the Iran's rulers adopted adopted the most illogical and most violent course of action in the history of struggles in Iran. Thousands massacred in prison. This happened after a few questions. What questions were like this? Are you a Muslim? Do you say prayers? Will you, will you declare that you hate your own political organization? And this was while there was a premediated effort so that prisoners wouldn't know that what would be the result of what wrong answers you know what is the wrong answer what is the right answer not knowing that the giving the right answer can mean execution ladies and gentlemen one of the results of these political murders is that many including the members of our organization were sent to the death gallows while they were they had some they were carrying out unjust sentences or had not been tried yet there were also those who whose sentence had finished but they hadn't come out yet most of those who lost their lives in this catastrophe were youth with an average age of 35 and when i said 35 i say for all those who lost their lives for 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 our mem for our organization the members lost their lives the average age was even lower 
the average age of 35 their horrible murder affected their families their fathers and mothers continue to have problems to go to their unidentified board graves that are in mass graves far from everywhere the government doesn't let them do that their spouses and and children are always harassed by the security authorities our organization has been able to bring about 200 200 of its members who were executed in 1988 this list that includes some of the those who are members of other organizations as well was first published in winter 1988 by the then authorities of our organization in Europe in Geneva we, were, we gave it to Mr. Galidopol I need to say that the organization of people's Fedayan majority in those years did a lot of work all over Iran many youth without being needing to register anywhere contacted our organization and worked with it in many cities it is th it is why we are sure that the number of our executed comrades is more but the special security atmosphere in Iran has so far not allowed us to be able to contact the survivors and complete this list ladies and gentlemen the list of the comrades that our organization has left has lost is so long I can't speak and name them but let me just tell you the fate of three of those who lost their lives Abbas Ali Munshi Rudseri Abbas was a member and an active activist for the organization he was a he, 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 he had been expelled from the medical uh, university in Isfahan in in summer 1980 in, in summer 1988 he was arrested together with his little son he, he was a political guy he wrote little poems and he gave it to his family in little papers when he met them his ring of marriage and some of his poems had he were put in the in his pants they were later found in a bag that was left of him in a letter from prison he said to his wife it doesn't matter how long they give me in prison if it's one day or more until you don't turn into someone that they want they will keep you Abbas did not turn into someone they wanted and despite six years that prison had given him the course had given him he was killed in that summer Hassan Nurbakhsh Hassan was born in 1957 he was an expelled student from the computer university he had a son he had been married who the son was two years old when he was decided in September 1986 because of his activities in our organization he was arrested and five months after he was sentenced to two years in prison Hassan too was executed in that very summer his cellmates have said that he was last seen in 30 August 1988 the official news of his execution in November 1988 was given to his family but a few years later when they issued a death verdict for him they put his death at, as October 1988 and they said that he had died in his residential home Nader Habibi before the beginning of the massacre of prisoners some of those convicted were on parole they asked them to come back to the prison on the eve of massacre Nader Habibi was one of them in 1986 he was arrested and sentenced to three years in prison but because he needed heart operations he was out on parole with a very heavy bail only three months were left from his sentence but in that summer he was he was called to prison and he was executed those close to Nada had suggested that he should not go back to prison 
and he should leave for abroad. But Nada had said, because he, because it was the because it was the house of it was the house of his friend very expensive that had been put on bail and that and that's why he wouldn't want to go and he thought he would be only three more months in prison but he was actually killed at the end of this ladies and gentlemen the arrest of the members of our organization and other political organizations of the opposition torture and their execution even based on the Islamic Republic of Iran's constitution has no foundation, no legal basis. The 1980s was a catastrophic decade for Iran. In this decade, illegal trials of political prisoners, of social and cultural and national activists, and the arbitrary actions by those working in prosecution offices and revolutionary courts were at an all-time high. In, from 1981, trial, executions without trial, where victims didn't even have access to lawyers, got to catastrophic proportions. In, in 1988, massacre of thousands of political prisoners was the height. In, in 88, Khomeini was the one who gave the order for this massacre. Shows the lack of commitment to the constitution even by the Islamic Republic itself. It is a crime against humanity. The People's Fadayan Organization majority asks the Human Rights Council and the special reporter of truth and lack of impunity and guaranteeing of non-repeat non to help us find the truth and stress the path to prevent these crimes. Here's what we want. One, identifying the place where all those who were killed are buried and also stop the limitations of families to visit the graves of their last ones. Two, Give the cases to, of people to their family members. Three, identify who were the main ones who ordered and carried out this massacre and this national catastrophe. Four, try them in, in open and just courts. F five, identify a day as a day for, those, for the victims. Let me end with stressing on this point. Finding the truth. Putting those who cause this on trial is a right of our society. Uh, our organization believes that this should lead to a document for those in future to prevent such crimes in the future. Thanks for your attention.